Have you ever had a really bad day? I mean, like one of those days where you thought you couldn't go on, you've hit the wall, uh, maybe you're at the end of your rope, uh, you've run out of gas, maybe a lot of the terms we might use. Not too long ago, um, a couple years ago when I was running a uh, mini marathon and I got to the part of the track, it's I don't know, like 9 or 10 miles out there and I ran out of fuel. I just couldn't go anymore. I was done. And so I had to pull off to the side. Um, I got a glass of water. I had a banana. I ate a granola bar and kind of got fueled back up. And I then kind of made it to the end, to the finish line. It wasn't pretty, but I made it. And it was one of those moments where I re- reflect back, I just kind of run out of gas. I didn't have anything left in me physically. Sometimes we run out of gas physically. Sometimes we hit the end of our rope mentally. Sometimes we would say that we've hit a wall spiritually in our lives. If that's ever happened to you, well, then you can relate to Elijah as we reflect on the story of him. If we rewind a little bit today in first reading from the book of Kings, we we would hear that Elijah has um, come to the temple uh, to give to make sacrifice. He's on Mount Carmel, and the king, the the priests of Baal are there, and they're offering also sacrifices. And there's this kind of um, there's this kind of standoff to who the true God is, and whoever received the sacrifice then from God um, is the true God. And so Elijah's sacrifice is received from God. And in fact, then he ends up killing the priests. And now the king and queen have set the entire kingdom, their entire army out after him. One man being chased by possibly thousands of others. And so he runs into the desert and he's hit a wall. He's out of fuel. There's nothing left in him. He sits down at that broom tree and he kind of gives up. He just says, take my life, Lord. That's a bad day. That's a hard day for Elijah. But the angels of the Lord come to kind of rescue him. And what do they do? But they bring him food, bread and water to eat. And he's refueled so that he can go on. Of course, we know this is a spiritual metaphor for Elijah. And he ends up 40 days and 40 nights in the desert to finally end up on Mount Horeb, the Mount of God, the mountain of God. In our lives, we know that sometimes days are tough, that we can have spiritual battles, that we can be beat up physically or mentally. Any parent knows that, of raising children that can be hard on any given day. Anybody that's in a tough work environment, sometimes you want to give up. Anybody that's been on a serious spiritual journey knows that some days are hard as we continue to try to be faithful in prayer and sacrament and living life charitably. But God doesn't want to have us give up. And in fact, like Elijah, he wants to feed us. He wants to fuel us spiritually so that we can continue the journey here on earth to be with him for all eternity. We continue the Gospel of John and we hear very clearly that Jesus wants to feed us as the bread of life. Remember that we've been journeying with John for three weeks now, and we'll hear the very end of it in two more weeks. Uh, We'll have next Sunday where we celebrate the Assumption of our Blessed Mother Mary, and then circle back for the very end of this Gospel, this powerful Eucharistic Gospel, chapter 6 of John. And in today's portion of it, as we get into the end of the chapter, we hear Jesus claiming that He is the bread of life that comes down from heaven, and that we must eat that bread of life. He is the flesh that gives life to the world. And of course, people are like starting to murmur. There's kind of a mere image of the murmuring of the Israelites in the desert, right? When God showered down manna for them to eat. The murmuring of the people in the journey, lacking trust of God. And once again, now before Jesus, they're murmuring. They've seen his miracles. They've seen how he's worked in their midst uh, as true God and true man. But now they're disbelieving again. You, son of Joseph and Mary, are going to be the bread of life for us? How can that be? And Jesus kind of calls them out. Stop murmuring among yourselves, he says. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him. I will raise him on the last day. He's claiming to be God. He says, I am the bread of life. Again, I am the reflection of who God claims to be in the Old Testament. I am who am. Now Jesus, the Jews would have received that as he's speaking as if he is God. 
And he goes on to say that whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. No beating around the bush. He says, my body will become flesh, will become bread for you to be sustained, to thrive on your journey to eternal life. And so today, as Catholics, we're reminded that, once again, we are given this great bread of life. And it should never be taken for granted. The body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ himself through the Holy Eucharist. And today we're reminded that that gift should not be kept private to us. That it is a gift that should be shared with others in our lives if we love them enough that we want them to be with us in eternity, in paradise, at the great banquet with God for all eternity. In just a month, we will be starting the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults here at our parish. All Catholic parishes throughout the world have a period of time in which during the year they invite those who want to learn more about the faith, want to perhaps come into full communion with the Catholic Church, want to receive the fullness of the sacramental life of God in the Church, where they can explore that and they can learn more and be taught about the truths of our faith. I wonder who in your life could you invite to this something more? It's not just a good thing that will make life a little bit better while here on earth, but it's an extraordinary supernatural gift that will help someone to get to God for all eternity, to be with Him, to be in His grace at the great banquet forever. Who do you know? Someone that has never been confirmed in the faith, maybe raised in the faith, but their family stepped away, and you can invite them into exploring this great gift of receiving Christ in His fullness through the sacramental life, the Eucharist. Maybe somebody that you work with that has been curious about your Catholic faith has asked you some questions, or maybe you know they're struggling, and you can say, hey, I know what it's like to struggle, but here's what fortifies me in those struggles here on earth. Maybe it's somebody in your family that you want to reach out to that um, has been away from the church and you want to have them re-embrace the great gift of of the sacramental life. Maybe it's somebody that's never even heard about the Eucharist that you're close to, a friend that you socialize with, somebody in the classroom that you sit by, somebody next door to where you live. I want to invite us to pray this next week about who can we invite. Who can we invite to this great gift, this great banquet of the Lord? Who is it that maybe we can be personally reaching out to? That personal invitation is so crucial. Every year as we do our CIA, Deacon Dave and I get to know um, the the candidates as well as their their instructors and sponsors. And the stories are phenomenal. It's uh, It's just so beautiful how God brings people to him. To the, through the Catholic Church. And many times we will hear, as we hear their stories, as we've heard some of your stories over the years who have come into full communion, we've heard that somebody invited me. I watched and I come to know, I got to know somebody who was Catholic and I saw their way of life and I wanted to know more about that and I was curious and they invited me to begin a journey into the faith. How powerful the invitation. We all know it that if we don't invite, then maybe they'll never come to the church. But if we do invite, they might say no. But if we do invite, they might say yes. And that yes could be the greatest yes of someone's life. And if we truly love people around us, then we will be people who invite them to Christ. And so let's pray about this coming weeks ahead as uh, we will begin RCA again in September. Who might you invite? Who might you invite to the greatest gift that we receive here every week? The body, blood, soul, divinity of Christ. So that we can thrive. And that we might then, with others, be with Christ for all eternity. He says... I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Who do you hope to live forever with God?